Hey everybody, Dr. Nick here with a new PSA for you on June the 30th, 2022. And you know, I hope everyone out there is doing the best they can. Because just a few days ago, the, the Supreme Court of the United States overturned Roe v. Wade. And that really threw the country for a loop, even though they, they kind of dropped a hint about a month or so ago when there was that leak about that decision quote unquote leak. But um, so it finally came down just a few days ago. And I know many people are upset. And many women are saying the guy shouldn't say anything about about this at all. But yeah, I'm going to touch that third rail and go there. Honestly, certain things just don't make any sense. For example, on the surface, there's no baby formula. But you want women to have more babies. And at the same time, I do believe that there are other issues at play here. So let's talk about that today. Let me get this PSA started by saying this. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas compared abortion to a, quote, tool of modern day eugenics, unquote. And to continue, Justice Samuel Alito said that abortion had a demo demographic effect. And he continued by saying, a, dis a highly disproportionate percentage of aborted fetuses are black. And then the CDC also found that a disproportionately high number of abortions were from women of, women of color. And then in 2019, the CDC also found that the abortion rate for black women was 23.8 per 1,000. For Hispanic women, it was 11.7 per 1,000. And for white women, it was 6.6 .6 per 1,000. So please keep these numbers in mind as we continue through this PSA. So in an article from the Washington Post on June 24th, it said that this new decision could actually harm women of color by restricting their access to abortion services and potentially criminalizing them for the for their pregnancy outcomes. So it's like you're already locking up black men, so now you're gonna lock up black women due to the pregnancy outcomes. Which brings me to the state that actually filed this motion in the Supreme Court in the first place, Mississippi. And of course, Mississippi has the highest maternal and infant death rate in the country. And of course, the numbers are even worse for people of color and black women. So for example, in the United States, coast to coast, an average of 18 birthing parents will die for every 100,000 live births. Now for black women in Mississippi, the rate is 52 per 100,000 live births. So let me get this straight. You mean to tell me the state that has the highest maternal death rate and the highest infant death rate just influence abortion access for every woman in this country coast to coast? Does that make any sense to anybody who is listening to this right now? As I said, some things just do not make any sense right now. So the next piece I want to mention here is called replacement theory. And it, this may sound like I'm putting on a tinfoil hat, but I'm not. Just follow along for a few more minutes, please. So in replacement theory, it's a conspiracy theory that states that non-white peoples are being brought into the United States and other Western countries to, quote unquote, replace white voters to achieve a political agenda. Now, and, this, and phrases like this are typically used by anti-immigration groups, white supremacists, and the like. And now I can also add politicians to that list because out of the great state of Illinois, you have politicians who like to quote Hitler like this. This is the battle. Hitler was right on one thing. He said, whoever has the youth has the future. Our children are being propagandized. Today, I want to encourage you to do two things. Fill your children's minds with what is true 
and right and noble. And then they can overcome evil with good because they can actually discern between what is evil and what is good. And then just to take it a step further, you have this same politician from Illinois who really did not even try to hide it anymore. They said she misspoke, but I'll let you judge for yourself. President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. Miller's spokesperson says she misspoke. For starters, yes, her campaign said that she misspoke, but if she misspoke, she would have said white to life. She didn't say that, but I digress. So going back to the point where I say nothing makes sense, where we have black women and Hispanic women having the most abortions coast to coast, where white women are having the fewest, pretty much, why ban abortions now? It doesn't make sense. Then we come to something called the birther. And if you never heard of this concept before, it first appeared back in the mid 80s. So I'm going to let Jane Elliott tell you all about it. And right now, white people are really frightened. If you don't understand the destruction of Planned Parenthood uh, offices, and you don't understand the wall that we're going to build on the southern border of the United States, you haven't read the book, The Birth Dearth by Ben Wattenberg. Ben Wattenberg was a brilliant Jewish man who was a member of the American Enterprise Institute. And he wrote a book, the first paragraph of which says, the main problem confronting the United States today is there aren't enough white babies being born in this country. He was an advisor to presidents of the United States. He wrote the book in 1987. He says, there are, if we don't change this and change it rapidly, white people will lose their numerical majority in this country and this will no longer be a white man's land. Now, I'm not misrepresenting, misrepresenting this. I'm telling you exactly, almost exactly what he says. He says there are three things we can do to solve this. Number one, we could pay women to have babies as they have been doing in Western European nations for years. Then he says, and these are his words, not mine, Unfortunately, we would have to pay women of all colors to have babies, so we don't want to do that. He says the second thing we could do is increase the number of legal immigrants that are allowed into this country every year. Then once again, he says, unfortunately, the vast majority of those wanting to come to this country today are people of color, so we don't want to do that. The third thing he says, and white men, women had better pay attention to this, 60% of the fetuses that are aborted every year are white. If we could keep that 60% alive, that would solve our birth dearth. Does that sound like racism to you? So this is where I'm going to need some of your help to try to put some of these ideas together. Because as I keep saying over and over again, nothing makes sense. So for example, you have Justice Clarence Thomas, who's talking about how abortion is a tool of modern day eugenics, right? So in his own conservative way, is he actually trying to save black babies or something else? So I truly wonder if he actually knows, or he may not even care, that abortion procedures like DNEs and DNCs are used for other healthcare issues beyond abortions. So he, is he trying to actually save black babies? at the expense of black women's health, where black women may actually die more. I'm not sure what's going on here. So now let's turn the corner where we have modern politicians who are quoting Hitler and talking about saving white life. And I went back in the data and I've never been able to find any time in history where white women were actually having more abortions than anyone else. And more specifically, I've never found anywhere that says white women were having 60% of all the abortions in the country. So I've never heard of that before. So that, so that idea that's out there just doesn't make sense, and it, it's a falsehood. And I want to end this section with a question. Could someone please explain to me why the infant mortality rate is so high in, in this country? It makes absolutely no sense. We like to say that, that we're number one on this and, and number one on that, but we're also near the top when it comes to that as well. So while we are looking at that, let's also explore why we have the highest 
maternal death rate out there as well. It doesn't make any sense. We like to say that, yes, we are a modern country and all that jazz, but our infants die and our mothers die. That doesn't make any sense to me. But we let the state with the highest infant mortality death rate and the highest maternal death rate limit access to abortions for everyone in the country. And yes, I'm talking about Mississippi once again. Those of you who know me, you know I like to end on a positive note or find some sort of solution to an issue. And in this case, the issue happens to be the overturning of Roe v. Wade. So a buddy of mine posted a possible solution to this issue, and I'm going to read it to you right now. Overturning Roe requires another law be passed that ensures men bear equal responsibility for pregnancies. Call it the Personal Responsibility Act. Using DNA as verification, paternity for every embryo should, should be established and the male responsible obliged by law to support the woman and the child through the child's majority, including medical costs, living costs, and education, all the costs a father normally assumes for his child. In addition, the child should have a full share of the father's estate if and when the father dies. If women cannot decide whether or not to carry a child, fathers should not be able to decide whether or not to support the woman and the child. It's about time men assume responsibility for the consequences of their pleasure. So in closing, I just want to apologize for this PSA being extra long. Yes, it's around three times as long as a normal PSA, but there are some things I just had to get off my chest and I call them like I see them. And with that said, please be ready because this Supreme Court we have right now is going to do other things. Because Clarence Thomas actually said that there, there are some other rulings that should be reconsidered. And he happened to mention Griswold, which is contraceptive access, we have Lawrence, which is a sodomy law, and we have Obergefell, which is same-sex marriage, or as I like to call it, marriage. So what we have now is a, is a Supreme Court, which is packed with young right-wing individuals. So what's next? Will women lose the right to vote? Will black people have to deal with this whole separate but equal thing again? Who knows? But don't forget, we assume that Roe v. Wade would be here forever, and now it's in the hands of the state. So what can you do? First off, don't make any assumptions. Number two, as long as you have the ability to vote, please register and go vote, because that is one of the strongest things you can do right now to make change and to move this country forward in a progressive way. So on that note, I'm out. You guys stay strong. Stay strong, have a great day, stay tuned, and I will talk to you soon.